sitting with multi-instrumentalist K.S. Rhodes out of Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, I was, right? born, I was born there. You were born there. How long were you in Tucson? Probably like a year. Yeah. I moved a lot. So I moved I, right when we left Tucson, we moved to Colorado, Michigan, North Carolina, a lot of, a lot of places. Did the music start happening for you when you were in high school or were you younger? I would say it started um, uh, it started in elementary school on the blacktop because hip hop had just gotten hip hop was huge at the time, and so I think it started with um, th- probably the first thing I ever did was like you know just making up songs and freestyling um, while my friends Rashi and Karzet, um I, I still remember their names. I mean we were in like fifth grade or fourth grade at the time. And somewhere they're out there, and I've I've name checked them occasionally throughout life. And one day I'm gonna run into them. But they used to, you know, they would beatbox, and and I would, you know, that's when I started freestyle and stuff. And I don't do that anymore. But I would say that was my introduction to music. Um, and then in high school I started playing instruments. As the guitar was my first. So. guitar happened was I was like playing video games at my friend's house and I looked in his closet and he had this electric guitar and this electric amp and they were just shining in there and I was like I want one of those I mean who what kid didn't want an electric guitar and I had no intention of even learning it Um, so then I took it home and I bought it with the Christmas money that I didn't spend on my family for Christmas my mom was very pissed off about it Um, (laughs) And so I used my like my forty dollars. I think that's how much it was. Bought, got a guitar and an amp. So I didn't get my mom or my brother anything for Christmas. Um, that's, that's pretty terrible, actually. Do you still hear about that today? Do you still hear about you buying the guitar? And oh stuff? yeah, I mean, my, if my mom was here, she'd be like, "He took his Christmas money and he bought his own guitar." With it. <laughs> They say your sins are passed down to you And I'm battling everyone Oh, this is where I come from So how do you get to that, get from there to to being the composer and arranger that you are today? You know, I think there's, it's interesting to me studying you, you, and doing research on your life and i keep the thing that keeps coming back to me is is you seem to fly under the radar <laughs> you know you you're critically acclaimed you've you've been compared to Roger Waters as a musician you've been compared to F Scott Fitzgerald as a writer you know but yet uh and i listen to your music and i, I am blown away by the spectrum of how far it goes from all the way over here to all the way over there, you know, and how do you get, how did you get there from freestyling it on the blacktop to arranging strings for the Nashville Symphony Orchestra? Well, I think um, you learn everything. I learned everything along the way out of necessity, I would say. Um, as far as the string arranging goes, I in college I got my had my first violin player in, in in a band that I was playing in, and I would want it. I just instantly wanted him to play certain stuff. You know, I guess that's how any composer starts. Is they're like, I hear this, will you play this? Right. Um, and luckily he was terrible at improvising. Like if we were playing a show and and it was time for him to just go off, it was like. <laughs> rough it was rough and we would just be like where did you go for the past like minute and um and so i started learning like i mean as basic as it was i would i had this drummer friend and he you know he knew times that the the time was a big part of writing music it was you know the very first thing you're like how do i how do i make how do i write an eighth note how do i write a 16th right what is an eighth note you know um and so i would call him all the time that 
that hat when you're arranging? <laughs> I guess I don't know. I have a lot. I have many. Is that your arranger hat? This is just my new hat that I've been wearing this past couple weeks because um, I don't know. I'm sort of all the all the hats are. There's so many hats. I don't know. Even know what I'm talking well, about. Well, mo- of course you do. Most of the time, I see you with a with what I call right. a tamasham. Now, is that what that's called? The one like that's, a newsboy? Yeah, yeah. I call that the tamasham, but maybe the tamasham's one with the button in the front. Your, does yours have a button in the front? A snap? It in the does. Front? Is that a different? Well, maybe it is a tamasham. I don't know. I don't know. Tamasham. Forgiveness is a medicine. station he turned to me and he said he said son just go home again oh cause the place where you'll end up finding what you're looking for oh it's just the place where you Wingnut is a term of endearment from me. If you're a wingnut, that means I like you a lot. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's why you're here today, because I like you a lot. So I can make a T-shirt that said, Eldon Thacker said I'm a wingnut. Yeah. Wingnut, Thackerbacker on the back. Thackerbacker. Yeah. You can do that. Find me somebody to print those up, and you can have all the T-shirts you want. Excellent. You know With in support of Aaron yeah, McCarley, I've, uh, I've toured a lot with Aaron, you know, um, over time. And then um, I'm touring in uh, in October. I'm going out. There's a band out of Colorado called Gunger, and I'll be opening up for them uh, for about a month. And we're hitting, you know, the whole East Coast, sort of Midwest part of the country. KSRoads.com. Yeah, that's where you want to look for this man right here, man. Yeah. You're one of my favorites. You yeah, really are. I appreciate it. I appreciate I'm you glad coming that I in. Be here today. All right. Thank you. Yeah.